Welcome to Ruger Tech Tips. I'm going to show you how to make all the adjustments on your Ruger Precision Rimfire Rifle. Before I begin, I want to make sure that the rifle is completely unloaded. So I'm going to point the rifle in a safe direction. I'm going to put the safety into the safe position. Remove the magazine. I'm going to check the magazine make sure there's no live ammunition. And I'm going to open the bolt up and make sure there's, there's no live rounds in the chamber, both physically and visibly. Also, there's no, no live rounds in my work area. To begin with, you just need a couple of tools to do this process. We're going to need a couple different uh, Allen wrenches to do this. You will need a torque wrench set to 35 inch pounds of torque, uh, a flat bladed screwdriver. There is a uh, Allen wrench that's in as part of the rifle to adjust the trigger. And also I need a good pair of safety glasses. So the first thing I'm going to do with the rifle is I want to I want to take the rifle and I want to adjust my trigger pull. So I'm going to close the bolt on my rifle and then this is a cover plate that covers up where our tool is located. So there's a little tab on each side and I can just get my fingers on there and I can lift this little tab up and then down inside there is a, an Allen wrench, just a little holder down in there. If you flip the rifle over, I'm going to open the bolt up and inside the rifle from the bottom, there is a spot down in here where you can slide just in front of the trigger guard where you can slide your Allen screw. You're going to slide that down in and you can turn this and either increase or decrease your trigger pull. It allows for about six revolutions to turn and you can go from two and a quarter to five pounds trigger pull variations. Turning the screw either tighter or looser beyond those does not make your trigger pull heavier or looser. It has a limited range, but you can adjust it to your certain feel that you're looking for. I would turn it half a turn, try your trigger pull and then adjust further as you need to, just to get satisfied with that, that trigger pull. Always do that with a bolt to the rear, close it to check your trigger pull. For your stock adjustment, we have, we've gone to a much simpler system where we have a single lever where we can adjust our length of pull, we can adjust this in and out as, as need be, as well as you can adjust the height of the comb for this. If need be, if you wanna move this position back, you can take this out entirely spin it down and re-engage that to shift that position. It is possible with this to disassemble this and reverse your control so you can have your lever on this side as opposed to this side if you're a left-handed shooter. You can also reverse your safety lever. We can move it from this side to that side. So on this, I'm just gonna remove my bolt, compress my bolt, bolt latch, get that out of there. And there's two screws in the bottom that's an, a 1 8 inch Allen screw. And these screws come completely out. They're, the screws are two different lengths. If you look at how, how the stock assembly is fit, it's pretty obvious that there's which screw goes in which hole. They're, they're different mounting positions. So the rear one's the long one, the front one is the shorter one. To remove the stock, your safety must be in the safe position. So you're going to lift this straight up and out. And down inside of our, our stock assembly, we have our safety and there's a spring in there and there's just a little spring arm on the side that I just need to compress that and hold that down and I'm just going to take the safety out of one side put it back in in the other side while keeping that spring compressed so just going to hold that spring arm down remove the safety slide it into the other side and then just ease up on the tension and that's it that's very very simple now I'm just going to reinstall my stock yeah, just need to seat your stock assembly down onto your receiver and then screw in your two screws. The short screw goes into the front. And again, I'm just going to hand tighten these down. They do need to be torqued down to 35 inch pounds of torque. But to start with, I'm just going to screw these down. Just hand tighten to begin with. I'm going to switch bits here to my torque wrench. And this I've already preset to 35 inch pounds. And I'm just going to Tighten that one down. And the last adjustment you can make is, again, to the stock. We can raise or lower our butt pad on this. There's two screws in the back, and all you need to do is loosen those screws. Do not remove them. Just loosen them up. And then you can now adjust this. It's got a fair amount of range of adjustment. Pick the particular spot that you want that butt pad set to, and then just retighten those screws down. Just, just hand tight is fine. One other adjustment we can make is we can, on this bolt, there's a clip here on this rifle 
And if we unclip that and remove the clip, just take a standard screwdriver and you'll see where it locks over the edge here. And I'm just going to pry this off and push this down through. Carefully not lose a little clip. So you just remove that metal clip, retain the, that metal clip. You may want to use it back. You may want to shorten the throw up. So keep that someplace safe. When you reinstall the bolt back in the rifle, now as opposed to having that rim fire length, length of pull, now it is much longer, closer to what would be the uh, 6.5 Creedmoor or 308 length of pull. So if you, if you have a center fire precision rifle, and the rim fire for practice, you now have, will have the same length of, pro, of, of travel for your bolt, that same length of throw. That is it on your adjustments to your Ruger Precision Rim Fire Rifle. Thanks for watching this Ruger Tech Tip.